Hey guys, Kino here, and uh, today I just want to talk to you guys about the uh, the recent tier shifts that happened uh, for the month of May. They are implemented on Showdown now, so you can use these mods on the ladder. And um, a lot of stuff's been pretty interesting. Uh, I'm not gonna be going through all of the uh, all the mods that uh, moved up or down, just the ones that you know I have experience with or you know have an opinion on. Um, there's also not going to be any battles in this video, so if you wanted to watch some battles, uh, you're not going to find it here, so go ahead and close it off. This is just going to be, you know, a little bit of discussion, just sharing my opinions on, uh, on the tier changes, like I said. So, yeah, without any further ado, we're just get right into it. Um, so the first Pokemon, I, well, the first group I want to talk to you about were the Pokemon that went from OU to UU. Uh, first on the list we have Celebi. Um, I actually haven't been seeing too much Celebi on the ladder. Um, but I think it's going to be really cool in UU. Um, I'm not surprised it moved down to UU. It was pretty non-existent in OU, especially with like everyone running Pursuit and stuff for uh, for Lotties. Um, like Bisharp, Bisharp, Weavile, Scarf Titar, literally on every single team. <clears throat> Even like Pursuit Scizor was uh, pretty common also. But anyways, I think Celebi uh, definitely has a lot of potential in UU. It's extremely versatile, you know, as you can see it does... Well, can you see? Okay, good. Anyways. Um, it does have the uh, base 100 attack all around. I'm gonna see if I can make this look better, a little better for you guys. Hold on. Uh, that's awkward. Okay, cool. Anyways, so yeah, it does have you know base 100s on every stat. I don't know why Showdown decided he had he, he didn't get any attack IVs, but yeah, you know he can be run a lot of different ways because of it. Um, the Baton Pass set, for example, uh, is gonna be pretty cool. He has access to uh, Sword Stance. He gets Calm Mind. He gets Nasty Plot. Uh, he can come in on a lot of things, I feel, and, you know, get a free pass, because he does have a lot of bulk. Um, he's he's a great support mon. Uh, access to Stealth Rocks, obviously. He's got the best move in the game, Thunder Wave, uh, Leech Seed, Magic Coat to, you know, bounce back status moves or hazards, things like that. Also, not to mention Natural Cure, making him a great, you know, Scald switch in. Um, kind of his niche in OU for a really long time, I think, was just a really good Keldeo switch in. Um, yeah, you know, he's Heal Bell, Trick, Toxic. Fortunately, he doesn't have Will-O-Wisp, that would be crazy. He doesn't, does he? Yeah, okay, I didn't think so. Um, but yeah, so that's a cool set. Um, he can be offensive, like I said, he has Sword Stance or Nasty Plot, so he can go, um, either direction with that. Um, on the physical side, you know, he's got Seed Bomb, he's got, I believe, it, yeah, he's Zen Headbutt, um, uh, Sucker Punch, Sword Stance, um, Let's see, what else does he have that I'm missing? I mean, return, but you're probably not going to run that. Um, yeah, it's kind of the bulk of it. I mean, I think that's a really good set, honestly. Zen Headbutt, Seed Bomb, Sucker, SD, that, that seems pretty good to me. He has Recover also, Synthesis also, if you want to be running some healing. On the special side, his move pool on the special side is is crazy, though. Ancient Power, which isn't you know amazing, but Rock Coverage is always nice sometimes. Uh, Dazzling Gleam, Giga Drain, or uh, Energy Ball, where is it? Energy Ball, or even Leaf Storm if you want to. Nasty Plot, or Calm Mind. Uh, Psychic, Psy Shock, I believe he gets both of those. Oh no, just Psychic, no Psy Shock. That's weird actually, I can't, I didn't know that was uh, a case. Um, Shadow Ball for like Hoopa and stuff. U-Turn, um, not, you know, not for the special moveset, but you know, U-Turn's always nice on utility ones like that that force out switches. Um, He's, I think he's going to be really nice uh, for a Swampert switch in. Uh, Adamant Ice Punch from Mega Swampert doesn't even two hit KO Celebi, so you can get your Celebi in there, force their Swampert out, you know, threatening it with a Giga Drain or something, and you can either plot up, Sword Stance up, use it for yourself, pass it to someone else, whatever. Um, <clears throat> that's, of course, speaking of max defense Celebi. Um, it's not a two, Ice Punch isn't a two hit KO, I guess I should clarify that. But yeah, definitely a really versatile Pokemon, and uh, I'm excited to see what people uh what people do with it so the next mod on the list is Con uh Conkelder, Conkelder, however you want to pronounce it um if you guys don't know Conkelder is one of my favorite pokemon um i feel he is still really good in ou um but you know everyone was just kind of stuck on his assault vest set you know his assault vest drain punch knockoff ice punch or poison jab mock punch um which you know it isn't bad but it kind of is pretty outdated um 
apparently a lot of people were talking about the bulk upset. I actually haven't heard much. That was just from hearing a po Pokeam did a video on this also, of course, which is very informative. But I'm, you know, trying to stick with my opinions here. Um, although what I do agree with him is that the Sheer Force Life Orb set is going to be deadly. Sheer Force Life Orb coming from, you know, if you're running Adamant, 416 attack. Um, he gets all the elemental punches, ice punch, fire punch, thunder punch. You can run poison jab for fairies, you know, Florges and Sylveon, who is the next Pokemon I was going to talk about. Um, you can run hammer arm or drain punch. Uh, Conk Elder, also amazing in trick room. Uh, did I, I think I did a video. No, I didn't do it yet. Okay, well, I have a video coming out with uh, Trick Room, Kelder, and Crawdon, which is a, a, a really fun team. Super offensive, but we'll get to that later. Anyways. Um, Kelder, I think it should be run max attack, max speed, and uh, whoa, what just happened? My bad. Anyways, uh, max attack, max speed for, you know, as much power as possible, but you can run it uh, either Adamant or Jolly. Um, the reason you might want to win Jolly is just because Florgis only needs to run like 12 or 16 speed EVs or something to outspeed Adamant and Kelder. Um, but if you run it Jolly, Florgis is, you know, wasting too much defensive investment in speed to outspeed, and Poison Jab will still kill. Um, I believe Thunder Punch is a two hit KO on Crocoon after Stealth Rocks, even if you're Jolly. I know it's guaranteed if you're Adamant two hit KO. Why does Shodan keep saying zero attack IV? Stop it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, just a really scary mod. It's a great wall breaker. It's going to hit through everything. Uh, Ice Punch for Gligars, uh, things like that. Or like defensive, defensive Salamence is not living uh, even a minus one Ice Punch from this thing. Um, so yeah, great. He's just going to plow through walls. I, I kind of see him as the physical version of Nidoking, honestly. That's how I see him. Uh, and I really have enjoyed using him so far. And yeah, uh, right on to the next one on the list we have is Sylveon. So Sylveon is a Pokemon that actually really surprised me. I didn't expect to see Sylveon move down to uh, UU. But now that it is in UU, uh, it is a threat. Um, it is terrifying. As far as, you know, the choice spec set, for example, Choice Specs, Pixelate, Hyper Voice. Oh my god, they're like switch ins do not exist in UU. Unless your name is Blissey, you are not switching into this and getting, not getting to a KO'd. Or if you're like running max special defense on Florges. Um, so Specs, Hyper Voice, pretty scary. I guess Metagross can switch in, but it's it's probably a three. I think it's a three KO on Metagross. So after you know one switch in, it's going to go down if you're running enough speed. Most Metagross, well, I guess some Metagross do run speed. I'm not sure because the like, defensive Stealth Rock variant obviously doesn't, but offensive ones will. Uh, and you can kind of tell which one it is based on the damage. Um, but anyways, uh, so Specs is really good. Also Calm Mind, like Calm Mind Pixie Plate or Leftovers will both be really good as well. Um, Sylveon does have a little bit more physical defense than Florges um, because of its HP. You know, as you can see, they're both around the same, you know, base 68 defense versus base 65 defense, pretty much the same thing. But uh, Sylveon has a lot more HP, so it gets a little bit more physical bulk because of it. Um, it can run a calm mindset with, you know, Hyper Voice, Psy Shock, Shadow Ball, and obviously not all of these moves, but you can kind of pick and choose. Uh, I like Psy Shock a lot on um, Sylveon, so you can hit the Pokemon when its name is Blissey. <laughs> um, you know, it obviously can also run a support set, uh, just like, you know, it could in OU, Wish, Protect. Heal Bell, Hyper Voice, I think was, you know, pretty standard. Um, but yeah, so I think it's going to do pretty much the same thing it did in OU. It'll just be a little more effective. Also, if you guys hear that meowing in the back, that's just my cat desperately trying to get my attention. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Um, so yeah, those three Pokemon, I think, will be really cool in UU. I don't think they're going to be broken at all. They're not going to be overpowering or centralizing. I think they're just going to be really cool additions. Um, now the next two I have here on the list, Mega Alakazam and Mega Altaria, they fell down to underused based on usage stats. Um, Mega Alakazam, I can kind of see it. I mean, it was a great check to rain teams, just come in, trace that swift swim and reverse sweep them. Same with sand teams also, you can trace the uh, sand, um, sand rush from Excadrill. Granted, you have to hit a Focus Blast after that, but, you know, it was, it was cool for that. But, you know, there are a lot of Scarfers that could just take out Alakazam, Mega Alakazam in one hit. Um, a lot of priority that wasn't Mach Punch. Also, I mean, a lot of Mach Punches would do, like, almost two at KO on Mega Alakazam anyways. It's so frail. 
Uh, Mega Altaria, I'm very surprised, moved down to UU in usage. I think that Pokemon is absurdly busted, but it definitely suffers from four move syndrome. You know, it wants DD, Roost, obviously Return, uh, Earthquake, maybe Fire Blast for Ferrothorns and Skarmories, uh, Refresh if, you know, you're going to get paralyzed or burned, or in that case, you could just run Facade. Um, or, you know, if you're a special set, you're probably going to get walled by Heatran because you're more than likely not running Earthquake. So, you know, it definitely, it's like people are able to deal with it much better than they used to be able to because this thing used to just break everything. But I'm surprised it fell all the way down to UU. Now, the reason um, it's actually borderline is because the items Alakazamite and Altaria Knight, Altaria Knight, whatever it's called, uh, were banned from UU. So the Mega Forms are going to be borderline. Uh, of course, Alakazam, regular Alakazam, is UU. It came down in January, I think, the last uh, tier shift. And Altaria is like RU or something, because non-Mega Altaria is kind of a trash can. Uh, in higher tiers, anyways. So moving on. Um, two Pokemon I can kind of put in one. Amoongus and Quagsire. Huge jumps went up from RU to OU and NU to OU, respectively. Um, and, you know, if you guys saw Pokemon's video, he was pretty much right on the money. The reason, the reason those two jumped up was just because of stall you know those two pokemon are essential on stall teams quagsire unaware physically defensive quagsire is the charizard x check literally the charizard x check and amoongus amazing on stall it switches in on a lot it can stop setup supers with clear smog it can put stuff to sleep with spore it's got regenerator i'm honestly surprised amoongus wasn't ou to begin with i don't know how he fell all the way down to ru smeargle is another case with that but i'll get to that anyways but yeah, Amoongus, amazing Pokemon. Quagsire, also a really good Pokemon. But um, honestly, the main reasons I'm happy these Pokemon are OU now is because I don't have to deal with them in UU anymore, which is fantastic, because I hated seeing Amoongus in UU. It was so frustrating, so hard to deal with, in my opinion. I really just hate this Pokemon. I hate just having to sleep fought or something on my team. Um, so yeah, good riddance. Uh, Zapdos, however, moving from UU to OU, I think that's a good change. Um, they moved Zapdos down to, or sorry, yeah, they moved Zapdos down to UU back in January, but then like only a couple weeks afterwards, uh, Zapdos' hidden release was, uh, hidden release was ability. <laughs> sorry, it's hidden ability was released static. Um, any move that makes contact, you have a 30% chance of getting paralyzed. So really great, you know, U-turn stopper. You could even paralyze Mons like uh, Choice Scarf Landorus that want to U-turn out. Um, and also in UU, in addition to that, you know, it was another very versatile Pokemon. Uh, let me jump back on this real quick. So Zapdos, great stats, especially for UU. Base 100 is pretty fast. Base 125 attack, special attack is insane. Uh, the choice spec set was extremely powerful. A lot of people were even running Air Cutter, uh, HP Grass for, you know, Quagsires, not anymore, and Swampert's. Um, it's Thunderbolt did a ton of damage, it's Heat Wave, um, so, that, you know, spec set extremely damaging. If you didn't have a ground type on your team, Zapdos was going to run through you like there was no tomorrow. Zapdos would plow through you without a ground type. And even then, you know, there were some Zapdoses that still ran HP Ice, although HP Grass was a bit more common. Um, but yeah, and also it also uh, made for a great gr Ugh, can't talk tonight. A great defogger, um, having pretty good bulk, 90, 85, 90. If you you know fully invested in one or like mostly invested in one, not much was gonna two at KOU. Flying electric being such a great type, being you know really only weak to um, rock and ice. But if you roosted, then you were not weak to rock and ice, you'd be weak to grounds. But if you went second, you weren't weak to ground. If you went first, then it was kind of more of a mix up. Um, you know how it works. Anyways, great defogger with, like I said, roost, volt switch out, heat wave on like fortress or whatever that wanted to try and set up hazards against you. Um, if you guys saw my uh, losers, my losers video, the last one, I think it was episode four, I got blown back by a Zapdos running extra sensory for like the Nido King or the Nidos, Nido King and Nido Queen, and uh, yeah, that was that was really hard to deal with. That straight up beat me. Um, so definitely a really powerful Pokemon in UU, and because of that, you know, a lot of people started using it. Plus, like I said, static coming out, people wanted to play with their new toys. So his usage stat bumped him back up to OU, which I think is fine. I think he's a very good mod in OU. Uh, OU doesn't really have great hazard removal options, in my opinion. I think Starmie is like the best hazard removal for spin. Um, Excure is okay. And then in terms of defoggers, it's like... 
the exact like the Lotties. <laughs> it's pretty much just the Lotties. Um, no one runs Defox Sizor. Uh, Zapdos being back is nice. No one runs Mandibuzz anymore, even though I think Mandibuzz is still really good in OU. Um, what else? What else runs Defog in OU? Like finding any every time I build a team, I actually have trouble picking a hazard removal I want to use. Uh, Togekiss is or Togekiss was a very good defogger back when Garchomp was like the most used Pokemon in OU. Um, Blyscore doesn't run defog ever. Yeah, I don't know. No one's no one in their right minds using um, Flygon in OU either. Um, or no, like Aerodactyl defog isn't a thing. So yeah, OU kind of lacking in uh, defoggers. So Zapdos being back is going to be nice. And then. Um, the last one I want to go in depth with is Hunchcrow. This one being pretty big, being moved from UU to RU. Now, I don't play too much RU, but Hunchcrow is terrifying. Oh my god, I think this Pokemon is... I thought this Pokemon was a great sweeper in UU. I think this Pokemon is going to be a little bit broken in RU, but we'll see. Um, its niche in OU was like... Just getting a kill and then getting the Moxie boost, priority sucker, you could try and pick him off uh, with Pursuit to get your Moxie boot boost. Obviously Brave Bird being an incredibly powerful attack. Um, I liked running Super Power a lot, uh, just for coverage, and if you get the kill with Super Power, you technically don't lose your attack buff. Because, you know, Super Power, your attack goes down a stage, Moxie boost brings it back up a stage. So that was really cool. Uh, in RU, you know, it's going to be very similar. Um, it also, you know, has access to Heat Wave for Steelixes. I saw people running um, special, uh, special Honchkrow with like Dark Pulse, Heat Wave, Sucker Punch for priority because you know you're gonna get that Moxie boost. And then uh, I don't know if they're running Brave Bird or something else. I actually don't remember, but it, it has options. It could even be running Roost also. Psychic. That'd be hilarious. Psychic on Honchkrow. I don't even know what that would hit. Um, but yeah, Hunchcrow in RU is going to be really good. I guess you could run Brave Bird and just be like truly mixed. Um, you, I guess you'd be like, uh, what is it? Not Timid, the one minus special defense, I guess. Because you're more worried about like Mach Punch than like Vacuum Wave or whatever. Um, and yeah, you know, Moxie Boost powering up your Brave Bird and Sucker Punches, Heat Wave, Dark Pulse, so you can run like Shadow Ball or something if you wanted to. But anyways, Hunchcrow I think will be very powerful in RU. I'm definitely going to play with him a bit in RU. RU is a fun tier. I don't play it a lot. I don't think I've even uploaded an RU live yet, but I should. I actually have a couple RU teams I'm going to be playing, and I have a video coming out with uh, one of them, a cool little sand RU team with uh, Stoutland. Um, and then the last one here is just Smeargle, which... I just put it here because I thought it was weird. Smeargle's so low. We moved down from RU to NU. This Pokemon does literally whatever it wants. Spore slash Dark Void, Hazards, Explosion, Baton Pass. Uh, I mean, I guess Baton Pass isn't quite as effective since... Oop, my cat's going crazy. Okay, he's good. <laughs> Anyways, I guess Baton Pass, like Leap Baton Pass, not quite as effective uh, since the nerf, you know, you can't pass speed plus another stat. Um, but yeah, just really surprised Smeargle is like so underused in uh, in OU or just in general, because you know for those of you who play VGC, Dark Void Smeargle is like the bane of everyone's existence. He's like one of the most used Pokemon. He's on like every top eight team, or at least most of them. So yeah, that was surprising to me. Um, some other stuff that moved was like Mawile moved down, Agron moved down. Um, what else? I don't know. There's other stuff I don't really care about, like. P I don't play PU at all. I barely ever play NU. I don't play RU, but I want to get into it because it is a lot of fun, to be honest. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much the ones I have an opinion on. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was a little informative. I'll definitely be getting some games with all of these Pokemon in each of these tiers. Um, especially UU, because, you know, I, I, UU is my favorite tier in, in Gen 6. UU has been my favorite tier since, like, the beginning of... Or ass, I guess. Um, are you looking fun also? So we're going to play with that too. But anyways, guys, leave a like if you enjoyed. Look forward to the coming videos featuring these Pokemons. Feel free to subscribe to not miss said videos with uh, these Pokemon. And I'll see you guys next time. Hope you had a great weekend. And uh, yeah, see you tomorrow, which is going to be Monday. Unless you're watching this late. In which case, I won't see you tomorrow because it won't be Monday. I'm rambling. Bye.